These burgers are the very definition of ugly delicious. Born out of the Great Depression, the idea behind this was to stretch out expensive ground beef by adding a whole bunch of inexpensive onions. So even though this was intended as a way of cheapening burger ingredients, the delicious combination of beef and onions combined to become far greater than the sum of their parts. Let's get snacking. The first thing you'll want for this burger is some ground beef, ideally with a fat content of about 20%. So it doesn't need to be fancy, regular supermarket ground beef will be just fine. Just make sure it's not too lean, the fat really helps to carry the flavour and helps with the browning of the meat and the onions. For each burger you're only going to need around 150 grams. Unfortunately I've only got lean ground beef. This is some extra lean ground beef that I had left over from a family meal, so I'm going to improvise. I'm going to make up for the lack of fat by adding some back in. I've got some reserve bacon fat in my refrigerator that I've just cut into small chunks which I'm going to add and disperse through the meat. It's not ideal but this is what I have on hand. I'm hoping this works out so keep watching to the end to find out. With my fat mixed in I'm rolling this into a bowl and setting it aside. I'm going to throw together a really simple burger sauce for this one. So for enough sauce for one burger I'm starting with about a teaspoon of whole grain mustard, about a teaspoon of pickle juice for some extra acidity and some nice pickle flavour, a teaspoon or so of mayonnaise and a generous crank of freshly ground black pepper, then simply mix those all together. These are some delicious homemade pickles that I'm going to add to the burger as well. If you're interested in a really good homemade pickle recipe, I'll post a link to my recipe in the description and at the end of this video. You can choose whatever kind of burger bun you like. So I've just got a nice simple white bread roll which will do just fine. Slice the bun in half as evenly as you can and then throw it over some melted butter in a pan to get it nice and toasty. As soon as they're nicely browned I'm going to remove them and start to prepare the rest of the ingredients. And now to the star of the show, the onions. You'll probably want about one whole onion per burger. For now I'm just removing the tip, leaving the root end on and removing the skin. I want nice long ribbons of onion for this recipe so I'm cutting it across ways the same way that you'd cut it if you were trying to make onion rings and because I don't want onion rings I want long strips of onion I'm cutting into the side of the onion to the center. If you're doing this in your hand like I am do be careful not to go right through and cut yourself. I'm then slicing the onion across ways nice and thinly. Once the onion's all sliced, I'm gently separating all of the pieces. And there we are, that's ready to go. Now back to the beef mince, which I'm separating into two halves and then with wet hands rolling them into balls. Wetting your hands before handling mince is a great way to stop the mince from sticking to you. As Chef John from Food Wishes always says, wet hands make smooth balls. That's always a good tip to remember. Because these are smash burgers, they cook really quickly, so I'm getting everything else ready to go. So as soon as they're cooked, I can assemble the burger. So I'm evenly splitting my burger sauce between the top and bottom buns and on one of the buns, I'm placing down some pickles. I'm using a non-stick pan for this. I think the non-stick pan makes things just a little bit easier. So I've got this pan reasonably hot, not screaming hot, and I'm placing down the balls of meat. Then over each ball of meat I'm placing half of the sliced onion, then pressing them gently down into a burger shape. Once they're a little bit flatter I'm moving some of the onion that's fallen off the sides into the center and giving them a proper smash. I'm using a spatula with a potato masher on top so I can get a nice firm pressure and really squash these meat patties out as thin as I can. We want to get a nice wide surface area this is going to give a lot more room for browning and the browning of the beef adds a ton of beefy flavor. I'm just grabbing some of the loose onions that have fallen off and putting them back on top of the meat and just giving them another little push to make sure that they're mostly stuck into the meat. Give each patty a little sprinkle of salt for seasoning and after a minute or so when the bottom started to brown flip over the patties so that they're onion side down. My beef's not looking too bad that extra bit of bacon fat has helped somewhat with the browning but I think you'll find that if you start off with a slightly fattier blend of ground beef you'll end up with much more even browning across the surface but this still looks like it's going to be pretty tasty. It won't take very long until the onions are sufficiently cooked so now's the time to put a slice of cheese on top of each patty and then place the top and bottom buns over that being extra careful not to lose your pickles. The buns will absorb a lot of the steam coming off of the onions so that no flavor or aroma goes to waste. As soon as the cheese is looking a little bit melty remove them from the heat then carefully using a spatula pick up the bottom half of the burger, then flip it over onto the bottom bun. Then again using the spatula, pick up the remaining half and place it neatly on top of the bottom. And that's our finished burger. It may not be pretty, 
but boy is it going to taste good. This burger really is an amazing combination of textures and flavours. Charred and caramelised onions, crispy but juicy beef, gooey melted cheese, pickles, sauce, all wrapped up in a nice toasty bun that's been steamed by cooking onions. It comes together absolutely wonderfully. It's almost hard to believe that someone trying to make a cheaper burger by stretching out the beef actually ended up making a better burger by introducing such wonderful complementary flavours. This is absolutely one of my favourite burgers to make at home. So now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go and devour what's left of this. For more burger tips and tricks, click on the link at the left at the end of this video. And until next time, happy snacking. The idea behind this? The idea behind this was to... The idea behind this? The idea behind this was to stretch... As you can hear, I have a new puppy.